Few video game systems make me think of things that could have been quite like the Nokia Engage does. Released in the pre-smartphone year of 2003, this was a cell phone that was sold in its ability to play PS1 quality video games. Or perhaps it was a handheld game console that was sold in its ability to be also used as a phone? Perhaps it was intended to fill both of these categories. But if forum members and game journalists of the era are to be believed, it seems it kind of failed at both. The screen was said to be too narrow for viewing games, especially compared to its contemporary, the Game Boy Advance. The shape and odd placement of the microphone speaker also earned it the nickname the Taco Phone. And perhaps most awkward of all, the battery had to be taken out of the system to even reach the cartridge slot. So who was the N-Gage for? I mean, sure, titles were available through stores such as GameStop, but systems could usually only be bought directly from cell phone carriers, most notably singular in the US. Perhaps it could be argued that Nokia wanted to carve out a new market, one not just comprised of diehard cell phone users or handheld gamers, but rather an odd combination of the two, not unlike the audience smartphones would begin to cater to after the iPhone launched in 2007. Or perhaps that's not even a combination of the two, but a completely new market. Perhaps the most unknown aspect of the Nokia Engage is its development cycle. All that I know for sure is that development began around the year 2000 internally at Finnish tech giant Nokia. It was formally announced in 2002, and during development it was codenamed Starship. But then, nothing. There's very few specifics available about this thing. I can hardly think of any other system that came and went with as little fanfare or really interest in its development history as the N-Gage. So imagine my surprise when, last year, I got my hands on an N-Gage of my own after wanting to start collecting for the platform for years. And then, after noticing some odd quirks with my system, I realized that this was actually a prototype unit. How such a thing ended up in Victoria, BC is beyond me. So after doing lots of research, asking for help both from Twitter and from the Nokia subreddit, and even reaching out to several well-regarded game collectors and tech enthusiasts, I can confirm that I know basically nothing. This is Stuff We Play, home of everything weird and retro. Today's video is more than just a showcase of a weird console. This is me doing my best to document this prototype game system, the only such system that I own, and also reaching out to the internet at large to seek development info about the system. As such, I have decided to title this video, The Mystery of the Prototype Nokia Engage. Nokia, connecting people. Before we go on, I'd like to give a little bit of background about how I actually acquired this system. I often talk about how I'm fortunate enough to live within 15 minutes of my favorite game store in North America, Epic Games and more, along with being an excellent store with a huge selection I've been shopping at since I was 13 years old, EGM is also special due to the sheer amount of gaming oddities I've gotten from them over the years. I got my Wappy Dog from there, my boxed Famicom disc system, and even this weird Pong clone that looks like some sort of blunt weapon. One day last year, I went to EGM to take a look at a box Commodore VIC-20 computer that they had gotten in stock. While I was there, I was informed that the shop had recently gotten in a Nokia N-Gage, but that was not out for sale yet, as it was untested. Side tangent, N-Gage systems are a pain for game stores to test, as the system will refuse to boot unless a SIM card is inside of it. Anyways, I asked Nick the owner if he would be willing to sell me the N-Gage as is in the untested state, as we didn't have a SIM card on hand. He responded that he would, on the condition that I got it as a bundle with the VIC-20 stuff. And that's how I ended up with both of these. Now what's oddest of all here, is that I didn't notice that this system was a prototype for another couple of weeks. And to be fair, on first glance if you look at this system, it doesn't look too different from a regular N-Gage. What tipped me off that something was odd about it though, was when I got a hold of a fake SIM card so I could boot it up. Side note again, on some models of later N-Gages, most notably the second revision QD model, Nokia actually did give an option to get a fake SIM card, just so you could actually boot the thing up without a cell phone plan. Anyways, my system, which is a prototype of the original model N-Gage, booted up fine, albeit after giving the battery a proper charge. 
the buttons all worked properly, and the screen looked fine. But, for some reason, some menus seemed rather incomplete, with some menu options displaying seemingly messed up messages. Things got even odder when I tried to play games. I have three different retail release games for the N-Gage, and none of them would play on this thing. But, in the process of testing out these cartridges, I finally noticed the system's true colors. For once, having to remove the battery to change games actually served a useful purpose. Underneath the battery lies a sticker that should display the system's model name and model number. However, on my unit, the model number was simply listed as Proto B 2.0, with the model number being listed as a series of X's. I quickly realized that my unit also had a very telling difference from most retail Engage systems. The retail version of the original model Engage had a grey case, with the center of the console having a carbon fiber-esque pattern. Mine, however, is pure white, with the center part of the system being all jet black. My original theory was that perhaps this was just a unit from some sort of store kiosk, but every single image I have found of an Engage kiosk shows that this could not have been the case, as most of those all appear with the standard grey case. My second theory then, which is the one that I think is most likely, is that this is a prototype unit from closest launch. Perhaps not finalized, but far enough along in development that it could be shown off at, say, industry events. That could perhaps explain how it got to Victoria as well, as I'm just a short ferry ride away from both Seattle and Vancouver. The odd system case coloration, the lack of a proper model number, the inability to read games off of cartridge, and missing Engage logo from the case points towards this being a unit from a point around midway to latest through development. One thing that may help us out just a tiny bit here is the one game preloaded onto the system. This is Space Impact Evolution, a basic shoot 'em up that came preloaded on a variety of phones running Nokia's S60 Symbium interface beginning in November 2001. Specifically, this version of the game is Space Impact Evolution X. This is important as this is a version of the game that was originally made exclusively for the N-Gage. This distinction is noteworthy as Evolution X also came bundled with all N-Gage systems, for a while anyways. To me, this points to this prototype being from late in development. If I'd had to place a guess, I'd assume sometime in mid-2002-ish, but again, I, I don't know for sure. Perhaps the strangest part of this mystery is how the system managed to make it to Victoria. The most likely point of origin is from near Vancouver. After all, Nokia has had offices in the Vancouver area for years now, particularly around Burnaby. Usually when I create videos, I like to know everything I can about a system before I cover it. But in this case, despite spending over a year trying to learn more about this prototype Engage, this system still remains a mystery to me. I don't know why it exists or how it got here. All I can truly do is just show it off, speculate, and talk about what I know about the Engage line of systems as a whole. So what was the legacy of the Engage? Well, the original model of the system was universally panned, feeling to many like a phone that was being forced to be a game system instead of a machine that flawlessly performed as both. Plus, awkward speaker and mic placement, along with the Tacophone nickname, led to a phenomenon known as side talking. This led to the Engage becoming an early instance of what we'd now call a meme. In 2004, not even a year after the original Engage launched, a new version of the system was released, called the Engage QD. This version was more ergonomic, featured a proper cartridge slot, and even moved some things around so that the side talking phenomenon would be no more. Perhaps the biggest change that came with the QD was that it was actually possible to buy one of these from a proper game store such as GameStop. Of course, such a purchase would also have to include signing up for a prepaid phone plan from Singular. I should mention that Engage was a rather impressive system for the time, even despite the flaws. It was like a proto-smartphone. It featured online gaming functionality and even had titles from popular series such as Asphalt, Bomberman, Call of Duty, Sonic the Hedgehog, and even an exclusive Elder Scrolls game in the form of Shadow Key. There are even some cool unique titles as well, such as Glimmerati and Pocket Kingdom. But 
By 2005, the N-Gage had failed to catch on. The Game Boy Advance had given away to the likes of the Sony PSP and Nintendo DS, and the N-Gage hardware was no longer impressive. It was rumored that Nokia was working a proper successor to the system, but at E3 2005, they revealed that this was not the case. Nokia instead wanted to shove N-Gage hardware potentially into other phones, and also wanted to release it as a mobile gaming service. This resulted in the N-Gage mobile gaming service in 2008. It was available as a way to play games on a variety of Nokia phones. However, the previous year, the iPhone launched, giving a new and debatably better way to play similarly styled games on the go. The Engage service would be even less successful than the console it was named after, and would quietly be taken offline in 2010. I asked a question at the beginning of this video. Is the Engage a phone that plays games, or a handheld console that can act as a phone? And really, I think the answer is a bit of both. Some could argue the same thing about a smartphone. And in some ways, the Engage, though basic, is kind of a proto-smartphone. It can play games, it had internet functionality, and it even beat the iPhone to market by nearly four years. But in the world of tech, being first doesn't mean you'll be a success. The iPhone just happened to do what the Engage did better, and though it didn't offer as many serious gaming options as the like of the DS or PSP, it didn't need to. Folks who wanted more serious gaming options overwhelmingly seemed to prefer playing their titles on dedicated game machines. As for this prototype unit here, for now at least, that's a gaming mystery still left unsolved. But anyways, that's it for this video on my prototype Nokia Engage. I've wanted to talk about this thing and really the Engage platform in general for a while now, but I wasn't exactly sure how to go about it. It's a really unique and fascinating system, and it was definitely ahead of its time. If you have any general thoughts about this system or any tidbits of info that may allow me to learn more about my prototype unit, please let me know in the comments below. I would also like to give a massive thank you to both some of my Patreon patrons and my YouTube channel members. They, of course, are Justin Chipman, The Golden Bolt, Dylan Ola, Robert and Abby Hornibrook, Eli Cole, List, and G to the next level. Their support means a ton, especially right now. Anyways, with that, thank you very much for watching. Stay classy, and I'll see you next time.